might move on to our next presentation. And, and that's with uh, Natalie um, Roxburgh and Susan Parker uh, Pavlovic from the University Center for Rural Health in Lismore. Natalie is a lecturer at um, Uni of Sydney's Rural Health School and holds a Master of Clinical Psychology. And Susan is a, a proud Yeagle woman from McLean in Northwest New South Wales and an Associate Lecturer in Aboriginal Health also at the uh, University Centre for Rural Health. Susan's passion is working with community-led initiatives to empower local community members and to embed cultural safety in all aspects of healthcare. And today they're presenting on enhancing self-compassion and well-being in Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health uh, professionals through art. So, you know, another great initiative, one that we don't pay enough attention to. So um, welcome, Natalie and Susan. Thank you, thank you. I'm just checking that you can see our slides. Yep, we can. Awesome. And we can hear you too. Oh, great, that's wonderful. Um, um, thank you. Um, before we begin, we would like to acknowledge that we're presenting on the traditional lands of the Wijibal Wiable people of the Bunjalung Nation and pay respects to elders past, present and emerging. Um, we'd also like to acknowledge the participants that have um, and clients that have um, been involved in our project and also the Aboriginal health professionals. And you can see here on these two slides that, um, that we've got um, some of the artwork that um, has been um, done as part of the project as well. Thank you. So compassion focused therapy was developed by Professor Paul Gilbert about 15 years ago, and it was designed to address um, shame and self criticism where other therapies weren't working. So the idea behind CFT is that our relationship with ourselves is fundamental and it's becoming more and more evident in the literature that CFT, um, what's it underneath many mental health problems is um, shame and self-criticism. And so um, developing skills of compassion really is an antidote to um, self-criticism um, and shame. So CFT is evidence-based. Um, my colleague James Bennett-Levy and I ran a pilot study in 2017, um, and we looked at um, CFT and adapted it to work with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. So what did we hope to achieve in our project? So like I said, we, we had some funding in 2017, and then the project was refunded by the Department of Health in 2019. And at that time, we were hopeful that we would start to run client groups in 2020. Unfortunately, due to the impact of COVID, we were unable to do that. Um, and like many services, we had to adapt the project um, in many ways because of the pandemic. So we recognised that locally, the Aboriginal services that we were working with and health, health professionals were very overstretched and, and certainly had to adapt their um, ways of working um, in, in terms of COVID. So what we did was actually move the, the project online um, and we changed the focus of not only building self-compassion, but looking at promoting self-care and enhancing well-being. So in the project and, and what we hope to do on the online training is helping health professionals to sit with difficult emotions without being scared. So we're looking at mindfulness and distress tolerance skills and learning to bring care and compassion to themselves and the work that they were doing in the community. So the online training for health professionals. Um, so we actually did this at the end of uh, last year. So in December, 2020. Um, and so basically what we had was eight health professionals from Tweed Heads all the way down to Grafton um, who participated. There was four female and four male health professionals. Uh, we had two psychologists, myself and James Bennett-Levy, a community artist. Um, 
and, and Susan, who was the researcher on the project. Um, so basically before the online health professionals training, it was ran on Zoom over eight sessions. Um, before the training started, we sent out each participant or health professional a, um, $100 worth of art material. So they had a box that included things like paints and pastels, um, lots of cutouts and um, glue and anything you can think of to be able to create um, awesome artwork was in that box. So that was sent out. Um, and then we started the health professional training, um, which, which really included three stages. So it went for two and a half hours on Zoom. And the first 15 minutes or so was really spent discussing or introducing um, the topic of the week. So that might be um, what is compassion. And then from there, what we did was actually spent um, about one and a half hours in doing um, the artwork that was related to that topic. And then at the end of the session, we spent about um, half an hour or so just debriefing the artwork as well. Um, it was really well received and I'll hand over to Susan to talk a little bit about some of the key elements and findings of the training. I know all of the health professionals um, said that it was a really, actually a really positive experience. Um, so there was actually a, a sense of surprise at how much people enjoyed the online experience. Um, you know, some of the reasons for that were not being quite familiar with technology, really a, a huge dislike of Zoom um, and always, you know, preferring a face-to-face -face sort of interaction. Um, one of the quotes that I'd like to read um, to you that demonstrates this was, uh, so the question I asked was, so you would have preferred it face-to-face? -face? And the response was, yeah, I would have originally. And then it was interesting because probably halfway through, I'm actually glad that it was online. One, I probably wouldn't have attended half the sessions just because of the way I was feeling, if I was sad or angry. I wouldn't have gone, but at least online, you can go. You can hold yourself for a bit. And then because you're doing your art stuff, you don't have to look at people and people aren't there. You don't have to put a face on because you know if you want to be cranky or sad at home and do your artwork, you can be. But you didn't have to put on a persona to hold that for other people. The fact that you didn't actually have to, for me, was a huge advantage. Um, and that was because I didn't have other people's artworks right there, having to look at them. Um, so for me, in the end, I actually found the online better. Um, other findings were that um, participants developed a greater sense of compassion for themselves and for the clients that they worked with. So one of the questions I asked was, can you tell me what were the most helpful aspects of the program for you personally? And the response was identifying that I was living in the red zone, you know, in that sort of hypervigilant, yeah, really stressed out state. Identifying that I was super stressed and, and then how to work a way out of it, to see a way through it, to identify it and sort of see your way through it and then work out how to get there and prioritise myself. Um, another question was, has the program made a difference in the way that you feel towards yourself? You treat yourself or you think or see yourself? And the response was, I'm trying not to be so hard on myself. I'm very hard on myself. And yeah, just trying to be aware of when I am being hard on myself. It's hard to identify a lot of that negative self-talk or the old patterns that have been, um, that I've currently used. You know, those leaning on things that have got us through but don't actually work or aren't really doing us any favours. I think I'd slip back in some old patterns. So the course really helped me, you know, to identify those. Um, and then the last question, um, it was, I, I remember um, asking the question and it was, a young mum who really just didn't take the time for herself. Um, so my question was, did you find the program to be personally helpful or not? And she said, yeah, um, I like that you had to take time out for yourself, like that you were having to think about your time being, the time for your well-being instead of, you know, everybody else's all the time. 
it really made me slow down and actually appreciate everything that I do for everyone else and not to be so hard on myself for not doing enough when I actually do everything. So the plan in 2022 and 2023 is actually to deliver more face-to-face -face, um, client groups. So we actually ran um, a session at Namajira Haven, which is a rehab facility at Austinville. Um, and some of the cards that um, were developed were just fantastic. Um, I mean, it, it doesn't do it justice showing them here, but um, I actually got the chance to go and interview um, five of the people who took part in, in the training there. And the best thing about it was that all the boys were turning up in between sessions and just doing art of their own accord. Um, you know, so while the program gave them that, you know, that safe space and that sort of um, purpose, it was something that um, they were empowering themselves by going in there um, outside of session times and, you know, using that as their own sort of healing. Um, the next step is also to train Aboriginal health professionals to become facilitators. So um, the, the idea is that the program will become self-sustaining self and um, with all of the Aboriginal community controlled organisations that we've partnered with, um, you know, the plan is that people within those organisations will step up and, and um, take the, the lane. The, the reins on doing the training. Thank you. Thank you, um, Natalie and Susan. And it's good to see you presented a couple of years ago, I'm sure. And, we did, uh, yes. We presented last year. So we did, year, um, yeah. uh, at that time, we hadn't done the online training, but we were, it was coming up in the December. So um, yeah, we've had the, uh, obviously we were planning to do face-to-face, -face, but certainly with COVID, it, um, it impacted that. So um, we're grateful that we did um, have the opportunity to do it online and, yeah. and also have the similar results to what we were able to do in person as well. Yeah, no, it's good to see that it's maturing up and, and you're getting, and even the artwork is uh, getting pretty flash. It is. I'm blown away by it. It's, um, yeah. it's incredible. Okay, so any questions yeah, or comments? And lots of comments and lot, I think lots of questions. So, uh, Natalie and Susan, we have a comment from Catherine Refshaw here who is becoming quite involved in compassion-focused care. Um, and if you wanted to reach out to connect, you should be appreciative of that. Mm. Um, another comment from Julie Sater, this artwork is lovely. Can we purchase the cards? Um, at this time, the cards aren't, um, aren't available to purchase and they, um, so we do have consent from, um, so the artwork that's shown in the, in the presentation, the um, health professionals have given consent for us to share them um, for the purpose of the presentation. So they're not for sale at this point in time, sorry. Um, you never say never. Yes. No. <laughs> um, another comment. And it's just, just pop out. It's from Kylie, Kylie Gwyn. It is oh, hi, Kylie. <laughs> <laughs> it is wonderful to hear about this work. Congratulations, Natalie, Susan, and team. Um, sorry, just going a little bit slow because it's hard to see who it's from. It is great to see this interesting adaptation of comp compassion focused therapy and especially how you adapted to online thanks natalie and susan for this interesting presentation i love the artwork i think that's a common theme um well done susie p deadly bunge along mob <laughs> thank you brother troy <laughs> thanks um, another comment from catherine refshorgi I believe compassion focused therapy is really helpful in healthcare when underlying when there is underlying trauma and shared trauma. This is fantastic. Thank you. I completely agree. Um, we are all from another we are all learning so much about how <laughs> online programs can make a real difference for people. I think through COVID we're all really seeing that. Um, great work, Natalie and Susan. Oh, goodness, ladies. <laughs> Seem to have just 
created a lot of interest. I think it's because it's such meaningful work. And you can, um, your passion is oozing out and radiating through the screen. <laughs> Great work, Natalie and Susan. Do you see possible links between the self-compassion training, art and other chronic conditions? And that is from John Skinner. Yeah. Look, I, I absolutely think that we can draw parallels. So in our project, we went specifically um, like in the client groups that we did in 2017 and the health professionals training, um, we weren't screening for things like depression or anxiety or mental health conditions. We opened it for people to, to participate. Um, but absolutely, I think everyone needs self-compassion and can use um, and benefit from developing skills of self-compassion. And particularly, um, you know, we've... Aboriginal people, we've always used art as a way of healing ourselves. Mm. So wherever there's any sort of trauma, um, you know, it, it, it would be a natural fit to be able to use art and, and this sort of um, compassion skills to sort of, you know, flip the way that we've always um, mm. viewed things, often from, you know, often really harsh on ourselves. Um, but one of the great messages from this is, you know, to speak to someone, like speak to yourself, like you would your best friend. So if you wouldn't say it to somebody else, you, you shouldn't say it to yourself. Um, one other key thing that I forgot to mention was that um, along with the surprise from, you know, the participants finding the online method so good, um, probably 70, 80% of the participants said they would like to do this training again so that they could continue to cement what they'd learnt in one session and then follow it up with something, you know, down the track with if it was six months or 12 months. Mm. Yeah. 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 I think no. art also mediates as well. So when we're doing self-compassion work, it can bring up a lot of trauma and it, it can be triggering for people, um, particularly if they haven't had those experiences of, of compassion in their life. And certainly what we found in the, in the online groups and face-to-face -face groups that we ran is that art tends to mediate that and allows people um, not to be as triggered and, and they can really go as deep as they like into their experience as well. Mm. No, thank you. And uh, one, one of the issues I think is, is really getting the opportunity to, to publish your work and, and to really encourage uh, some of the uh, policy makers to see art as an important therapy. You know, there's been ongoing efforts to try and uh, use art therapy in the justice uh, system uh, for our mob, and it has uh, mixed, mixed reactions nationally. Um, mm -hmm. One of the other big collaborations uh, that you might want to uh, consider is that University of Canberra has uh, uh, got a, a very big project with Department of Defence to look at art therapy for uh, to address PTSD and and uh, uh, you know and, and that but that's with mainstream and so when it comes to our mob it's very difficult to get funding but I can tell you there's big money coming in uh, out of defence for some of the art therapy and uh, to address PTSD and PTSD is not just about veterans it's about a lot of us uh, um, experience that as well so so yeah some some um, uh, collaborative uh, uh, working to get published would be, uh, I think, really important. Yeah, thank you. We have had one article um, published for the online, sorry, the face-to-face -face group that we ran in the pilot um, project. So I'm happy to share that around um, with everyone as well. Um, so it was published, I think, last year in the Frontiers um, Journal of Frontiers in Psychology. So I'm, I'm more than happy to share that with everybody Excellent. as well. Yeah, well, and you've also seen a few, uh, few of our leading researchers have uh, uh, given you their contact details to touch base with. So yeah. I think it's, uh, yeah, fantastic. And, and I'd suggest you maybe even talk to Pat Dudgeon, who's the Poach Fellow at uh, Uni at WA, what, what she's doing. Okay, well, thank you. And, um, thank you.